In the last video I did about the C6 Corvette, I evaluated 10 different potential modifications suggested by the viewers, everything from rear differential gears to headers and everything in between as the next modification to be made to the 6 liter LS2. After evaluating all 10 different options, the choice was made to go with an aftermarket camshaft. I chose the aftermarket cam as the next modification because it can be a very cost effective way to change the car's sound, attitude, and if done properly, increase the car's performance. especially if you have the ability to install the cam yourself or you have a Corvette buddy that can help you with the job. And besides, Richard Holder even says it's the best modification. Because if you're gonna modify a six liter, the first thing that you should do with any six liter, regardless of which one it is, if you wanna get the most bang for your buck, is put a camshaft in it. If you missed that video, don't worry, there's a link to it right up here. And now that the decision has been made to upgrade the camshaft, now starts the daunting task of deciding which specific cam to go with. You wouldn't think it should be so hard to choose the right bump stick for the LS2, but the choices are absolutely head spinning. There are cams offered from Summit Racing, Competition Cams, Crane, Tick, Cam Motion, Brian Tooley Racing, and many, many others. In addition to that, there are truck cams, stealth cams, boost cams, chop cams, max effort cams, and literally every possibility in between. And there's no solid lines, just every possible combination you can think of, of lift, duration, split, LSA, and overlap. As you may know, swapping out the camshaft in a C6 Corvette is a rather time intensive endeavor. So I have to choose wisely because if I go with too mild of a cam, I'll end up upset with myself because I left too much horsepower on the table. And if I go with too aggressive of a cam, I may end up hating to drive the C6 because it becomes a pain in the ass to drive it even in everyday traffic that's not rush hour. So to start the cam selection process, there's no better place to start than with an expert. And there's no better expert out there than yourself who can honestly and accurately answer the following questions. Number one, what kind of vehicle is the camshaft going into? Now, obviously my camshaft is going into the LS2 and the C6 Corvette, but keep in mind there are LS cams offered for all kinds of GM vehicles with LS engines. And on the opposite end of the C6 spectrum, you've got a three quarter ton four wheel drive pickup that does a lot of trailer pulling on a daily basis. And that takes a drastically different camshaft than the one I'll be putting in the C6. The next question you really have to consider and answer honestly is what will you be doing 90% of the time with your C6? And the way I see it, there are three possible answers to this question. Number one, it's a daily driver and it does encounter a fair bit of stop and go rush hour traffic. All right, we're gonna give her a little rev under this bridge, go for it. Number two, it's primarily a second car and 90% of the time it's used on evenings and weekends just for spirited street driving or the occasional trip to the track. Number three, it's really 90% race car. Perhaps you go drag racing a lot and maybe you even trailer it to the drag strip or you attend a lot of high performance driving events on longer tracks like the two plus mile track at Brainerd International that Ben and I attended this past summer. For me, the answers to these questions are pretty straightforward. The C6 is absolutely a second car, so it's almost never stuck in stop and go daily traffic. I use it almost exclusively on the evenings and weekends for spirited street driving, probably several autocross events each year, and perhaps I'll attend one longer high performance driving event per year, and of course the occasional trip to the drag strip where I'm not really there to do any drag racing. It's more so to make a few passes and evaluate the performance of the LS2 engine, and of course, have a bunch of fun. You have to make sure that you answer these questions honestly and resist the temptation to put in too large of a bottom of the page cam in your engine. In my experience through the years, I'm more aware of guys who have regretted going with too large of a cam as opposed to those that have gone too mild and regretted it. 
What about you guys? Let me know in the comments below what your experiences have been or experiences of friends that you know of. So next I need to consider the RPM range the LS2 will be in for the primary uses that I just identified. And so for spirited street driving from the time I leave the garage till the time I get back, the fact is nothing really changes and the LS2 engine is gonna be at 2,500 RPMs or less the vast majority of the time. So it's incredibly important that I don't use too radical of a cam reaching for that massive high RPM horsepower number or I might just end up trading more low end torque than I wanted to. I also don't hang out too much while street driving in those mid RPM ranges of three to 4,000 RPMs. However, when I go auto crossing with the C6, this is exactly the RPM range I'm at most of the time. So I wanna make sure that I don't lose any mid-range power and hopefully I even pick up a few. And fortunately, I believe this is entirely a possibility by selecting a camshaft with a little bit tighter lobe separation angle than stock and more on this in just a bit. And finally, the upper RPM area, which for me, I consider to be 4,500 RPMs all the way up to my self-imposed red line of 6,800 RPMs. And this RPM range definitely comes into play at the drag strip. And as you can see by this quarter mile graph, I'm at 4,500 RPMs and above the vast majority of the quarter mile run. However, I have to take a step back because at the end of the day, drag racing ends up being a tiny fraction of 1% of the total time the C6 is driven in the summer. So that's just something to keep in mind. That having been said, if I'm being honest, if it's safe, I look at every single freeway on-ramp as a mini drag strip and a chance to stretch the LS2's legs. And I also look at those Sunday afternoon peaceful drives. as an opportunity to run through the gears multiple times all the way up to redline. And for me, this is the reason I'm going to be going with a performance cam in the first place. So with this comprehensive deep dive review of how I intend to use the C6 out of the way, I've decided to go with what I consider to be a mid-range performance cam. So specifically what types of camshaft ingredients go into a mid-range sports car camshaft versus a low-end torque heavy truck towing cam on one end of the spectrum and on this end of the spectrum a max effort cam where you're going to be trailering the car to the track and it's pretty much at three to seven thousand rpms all day long this is where things can get complicated quite quickly and honestly i am by no means a camshaft expert but that doesn't mean we shouldn't have a pretty good understanding of several of the camshaft key technical fundamentals and relationships Let's start out with lift because it's easy. Most of the time, they're probably gonna give you the spec for the lift at the valve using the factory rocker arm ratio. But to be 100% certain of what your valve lift is gonna be, you need to know the lift of the camshaft lobe. Multiply that by the rocker arm ratio. Most are 1.7 to one that you're using and that gives you the actual valve lift. Now, I think it's fair to say that most guys agree that for spirited street use, you probably want to keep your maximum valve lift on LS2 heads to six tenths of an inch. That way you don't have to use incredibly strong springs that can be detrimental to valve train stability, reliability, and lifespan. So for the mid-range performance cam that I'm going to be searching for, I'm going to keep that valve lift somewhere between 0.550 and six tenths of an inch. That's a wrap on part one, guys. Be sure to come back for part two, where we'll talk about duration, lobe separation angle, overlap, a whole lot more, and hopefully we'll place an order for a new camshaft. Thanks for watching.